That door just keeps getting wider for the Lions to walk in and win the NFC North in 2023. We explain next. You are Locked On Lions, your daily Detroit Lions podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, here we go, everybody. It is another episode and edition of Locked On Lions right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Matt Derry with you on this, a Thursday, March 9th, and a Friday, March 10th. Thanks for checking us out, making us your first listen each and every day right here on Locked On Lions. And today's show is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. Don't miss that chance to get that no-sweat first bet. Up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash Locked On. FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NFL. Follow us on Twitter at Dairy Speaks, at uh, Locked On Lions on Twitter, LockedOnLions.com, the Matt Dairy Facebook fan page, and you can find us each and every day right here. What's up, everybody, on the Locked On Lions YouTube channel. Coming up on the show today, John Kaminsky speaks. That's right. The soon-to-be on Monday free agent defensive end spoke to Zach Jackson of The Athletic about his situation. Will he re-sign with the Lions? Does he want to come back to Detroit? We'll give you some of those quotes coming up. There's a serious implosion in the NFC North right now. If you're not paying attention to the rest of the division, the Lions are going to be the favorites. I don't care what Vegas says. We get closer and we got free agency and the draft and everything else. We got a long off season to go. But you can't tell me based on what's going on with the teams around the NFC North that this is not going to be a huge opportunity for the Lions. I'll explain momentarily. Uh, Michael Lombardi on the Pat McAfee show today says the Rams are trying to trade Matthew Stafford. Um, That's pretty crazy. Uh, And here's where I want to start today before I get to any of this other stuff. Um, The Lions own this town. All right, they do. It's a football town. Lion fans, you are amazing. You're tremendous. You are hooked on this team. You're dedicated no matter if they've won playoff win in 60 some odd years, whatever it is, all the history, the Fords, everything else. This is a lion's town. But I, let me just say something here. This town needs the lions right now more than ever, more than I've ever seen today. And I know nobody really cares, but Michigan basketball lost in the first round of the big 10 tournament. Michigan basketball lost 15 games this year. So if you're a sports fan around here, and many of you are more Michigan, pro-Michigan than pro-Michigan State, there's just, you know, that Walmart crowd and everything else. You know, you grew up on Michigan, whether you were in, you went to Eastern, Western, said, oh, Michigan, I love Michigan. Right. Okay. Michigan basketball lost today in the first round of the Big Ten tournament. They're probably not now going to the NCAA tournament. They've lost three in a row. Jawan Howard's team lost 15 games this year, and it's another disappointing year. If you're a Michigan basketball fan, the Pistons lost their best player in Cade Cunningham. They've lost 51 games this year. All right. It's not been a good season. The Red Wings have just cleaned house, not making the playoffs again. And yes, Wings fans, I think, are intrigued by the Iser plan. But what are we like year four, year five of this rebuild? Another year of no playoffs for the hockey team that right now can't win a hockey game to save their lives. Michigan State basketball plays tomorrow in the Big Ten tournament, but it hasn't been a great year for them. We're going to have to wait and see. Uh, The rest of the college basketball landscape in this state is absolutely pathetic. All right. The bottom three teams in the MAC are all Michigan teams, Eastern, Western, and Central. Oakland lost again in the uh, Horizon tournament. Detroit, their highlight is that they've got the nation's, you know, leading score, but they lose all the time, and they lost in the first or second round of the Horizon Our teams are, the Tigers are going to be horrible this year. Horrible. The the articles in the newspaper are like, hey, Spencer Torkelson hit the ball hard. Sweet. Still hitting 160 in the spring. They're going to be really bad. So the Lions have got to save us again. You know, there's that that classic sports radio summer topic when it gets slow. Which team in town has the best chance to be in the playoffs first? Which team in town is going to win the next? The next championship around here. 
any of these topics should start and finish with Detroit Lions. Seriously. These other teams are terrible. Everywhere. Uh, now, college football, Michigan football was good. I take that back. Michigan football was good. They won the, the Big Ten. That was that was good. Good sign. Made it to the playoff. Choked again. But still, I mean, Harbaugh's got, there's good talk in Ann Arbor about the football team. The football program is ascending. But other than that, it's Lions, man. And if you're just a Proves fan, Wings, Tigers, and Pistons, it's tough out there. It's tough. Now, with that being said, with that being said, the NFC North teams around the Lions, the defending division champion Minnesota Vikings, totally imploding. The Green Bay Packers are apparently talking and reportedly talking to the Jets about compensation for Aaron Rodgers. Don't give me this crap about, oh, no, no, they, they can't trade Rodgers. We own Rodgers now. We want him to stay. No, you don't. No, you don't. You have no idea if Jordan Love can play. And if Jordan Love can't play, the Packers have no chance. Aaron Rodgers might not be the same guy. Aaron Rodgers might have played two pretty crappy games against the Lions this year, and they swept him. But Aaron Rodgers can still play. He's still a Hall of Fame quarterback. Don't give me this, oh, yes, I want Aaron Rodgers gone. This is or, or, no, I don't want Aaron Rodgers to leave. No, don't trade him to the Jets. No, we want him to stake us. We own uh, number 12. No, no, you don't. No, you don't. You, you, you beat him twice this year, but Aaron Rodgers is still good. The Bears, their general manager is flapping his gums, telling the world he's trading the first pick, which to me hurts his leverage, and their roster is terrible. And they're probably keeping Justin Fields, and there's no guarantee he can throw a forward pass with consistency. He can, he's a hell of a runner. But let's talk about the and All these things are happening. It opens the door for the Lions to really, really win this division for the first time since the early 90s. It's time. It's long overdue. Long overdue. The defending NFC North champions are the Minnesota Vikings. Got lucky this year with a lot of close wins. Now, over the last few days, let's recap this have to release Eric Kendricks, their best of arguably their best defensive player, for salary cap reasons. Their middle linebacker and captain of the defense out. Adam Thielen today, it's been announced, it's going to be a cap casualty. He'll be gone. Didn't have a good year. His body's beat up as a veteran wide receiver, but you win with veterans in this league. Adam Thielen is a really good, solid vet. That's That hurts their locker room. Now, moments ago, I'm reading Zadarius Smith, their best edge rusher, not named Daniil Hunter, but he's good. The Darius Smith tweets out, thanks for a great year, Minnesota. Love being on the Vikings. Ian Rappaport's reporting that tweet means the Darius has told the team, release me. I don't want to be here. Let me go. And the Vikings are saying, no, we don't, we're not letting you go. So there's a stalemate there. They haven't signed Justin Jefferson yet to a long-term deal, and they will. But still, the Vikings are imploding. The Packers are about to trade their franchise quarterback and run out a guy that nobody knows if he's good or not. And the Bears blow. Wow. The NFC North is crashing down. And at 222 Rodwood Drive, the plane is taking off, and it looks good in the sky. Ooh, baby. I love it. I think it's awesome. Uh, all right, coming up next, uh, John Kaminsky speaks. The commish, is he coming back to the Honolulu Blue and Silver Gladiators? We will tell you about that coming up. First, though, got to do my read and got to tell you about FanDuel Sportsbook. Oh, baby, the official sportsbook of the Locked On Podcast Network of the NBA and also of the NFL. NBA season's in full gear now. We're getting close to the playoffs. Now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. You want to put some action down on tonight's big grudge match between the Pistons, and as Albert Dale used to call them, greatest engineer in the world, Le Hornet. Pistons and Hornets tonight, get that no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It is safe and secure, 
and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything you want, from the money line to point scores to three-pointers made, all of that. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same-game parlay. Don't miss a chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. That's FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NBA. All right, so the Lions have some decisions to make in free agency. It all begins on Monday when teams can start talking to players, their own players. They can start re-signing players tomorrow if they wanted uh, from their own team, et cetera, like a Jamal Williams. What about John Kaminsky? Uh, Zach Jackson from the Athletic.com, who's based out of Cleveland, had a chance to get a hold of and speak with John Kaminsky, who, of course, the Falcons cut last year the lions signed and he had a really really good and solid season four and a half sacks five tackles for loss 12 quarterback hits three passes defensed and a forced fumble kaminsky is hitting the open market as an unrestricted free agent but tells zach jackson he would like to come back and play for the lions quote i think they want me there kaminsky tells the athletic i want to be there we'll see how it all works out Quote, I love playing for Dan Campbell. You're just not headbutting another player before the game in Detroit. The coaches are in on that too. (laughs) I like that. Uh, It's a business side, he says. Maybe another team will bring some numbers and the Lions will have to see what they want to do. I hope it works out there, but I really don't know. Kaminsky was a fourth round pick in 2019, played in 27 games with the Falcons, waived in May. Picked up by the Lions, and he had a really good season. John Kaminsky, on the record, saying, I want to be back in Detroit. I think this is a no-brainer for the Lions. If you're Brad Holmes, you bring him back. You make it a priority. Here's the problem. Zach Jackson covers the Browns for the Athletic. I've told you this for weeks. Cleveland is desperate, desperate for defensive linemen, both off the edge uh, after losing Clowney and on the interior. Kaminsky can play both, both, both sides. He can play inside and outside. He can play in both spots. That would be a guy that I would think the Browns are going to throw some money at. But Brad Holmes, we know this. He loves defensive linemen. He loves disrupting quarterbacks. He has drafted Aiden Hutchinson, owns Arike, McNeil, Pascal. He signed Charles Harris. He's re-signed Romeo Quar. Um, there are a lot of defensive linemen in Brad Holmes's stocking, all right? He wants to stock up on D linemen. James Houston is another one he drafted. So for a general manager that's into D linemen, and for a guy like John Kaminsky, number 79 in, the, or, uh, in your program, I love the way he played last year. He was relentless. He fit the bill for what the Lions were looking for. He was aggressive. He was downfield making plays. He was uh, getting upfield and getting to the quarterback. And he should be rewarded. And I think the Lions should not lose him. They've got to make it a priority. In my opinion, I think Jamal Williams has to be back. And I think John Kaminsky has to be back. You don't want to lose guys that want to be here and effective players. This was a rotational defensive lineman that when he was on the field was very disruptive. Now, again, if the Browns throw some exorbitant amount of money at him and it's ridiculous money and the Lions can't match it, then it'll be a Brown or it'll be somewhere else. But I like John Kaminsky a lot. I really think he fits here. Played for a contract, still very relatively young, and I would hope that the Lions keep him around. Uh, we'll have to wait and see on that. But uh, it's, it's definitely interesting. You'd never think when you really look at free agency, you look at some of the players out there, like I'm I'm reading about Levante David today can be let go. We've talked about Bobby Wagner being available. We've talked about Eric Kendricks being available. Now, uh, Zadarius Smith wants to, um, you know, get released so he can test the market. A lot of big, bigger names out there than John Kaminsky, but the commish did a whale of a job this year. And I hope that the Lions can bring him back. 
So interested in your thoughts on that on our Locked On Lions YouTube page. If you want to comment on Twitter at Dairy Speaks or on the Facebook page as well. All right, coming up next, Michael Lombardi of the Lombardi Line and VSIN. We've had him on the show before. He went on Pat McAfee today and said something I never thought I would hear. Uh, we'll get into that next, right here on Locked On Lines. Hope everybody's having a good Thursday. Locked On Podcast Network right here, Locked On Lions. Shout out to all the listeners and the viewers. We appreciate everybody uh, for checking us out uh, right here on uh, Locked On Lions. We thank you for doing that. My man, Steve Wilson. Shout out to Steve and the uh, fine folks at Auto Lab. Love my guy, Steve. He's a viewer and a listener as well. And uh, Randy Birdo. If you guys remember Randy Birdo, legendary traffic man for many years in Detroit. Uh, Randy ran into my buddy of uh, the uh, um, the warden, Randy Haas, uh, down in Lakeland yesterday. So the two Randys are checking out Lockdown Lions as well. Shout outs to them uh, too. All right, so... Michael Lombardi was on Pat McAfee today. And Lombardi's a little crazy. Like, when we had him on the show, he was just torching the lines. But he's entertaining. Former front office man for many years, former Belichick guy, now working as a VSIN NFL analyst. He does the Lombardi line. I think it's on, like, 10 to noon Eastern on VSIN. Michael Lombardi was on Pat McAfee's show today and said that the St. St. Louis, that the Detroit, no, The L.A. Rams, not the Detroit Rams, the L.A. Rams are trying and are desperate to trade Matthew Stafford. What? Lombardi's like, oh, yeah. But, you know, he's going to be making too much money this year and he's guaranteed $50 million or whatever it is with Stafford. So, but the Rams are trying to trade Matthew Stafford. Have we gone like completely cuckoo here? Has this thing gone full circle? It was just two years ago. The Lions, who never wanted to trade Matthew Stafford. The fans didn't, well, most of the fans. They didn't want Matthew Stafford to be traded. Most of you didn't. Matthew Stafford got his wish and went to the Fords and said, I need to go somewhere else. And it all worked out for both sides. Stafford got traded to the Rams. He and Kelly got to go to L.A. And he won a Super Bowl in his first try. It was very Lion-esque. Now, after last year when he was very banged up, a bunch of injuries, there's even some talk of, is Stafford coming back to play? Could he retire? But, of course, if Stafford retires now, he couldn't go into the Hall of Fame because it would be overmatched by, uh, overhyped by, uh, and the spotlight would all be on Tom Brady. I'm joking. I don't know if Matthew Stafford's going in the Hall of Fame. That's for another topic for another day. But the Rams trading him? Why? Why? It's not like Matthew Stafford's 40. Is he that injured? Does he have some sort of spinal injury? Back, neck, head? What's going on? Now, Michael Lombardi has been wrong before. This is one person's report. But trading Stafford after just two years with the Rams would be pretty nuts because the Lions seem to have their quarterback for now and maybe even the future from that trade in Jared Goff. They've gotten two first-round picks. For Stafford, middle round pick for Stafford that they used last year to trade up to get Jamison Williams. If somehow, some way, the Rams were trying to trade him, what a what a what a steal than the Brad Holmes made in making that deal. I that would surprise me. Why would the Rams give up on a guy that is super tough, still young enough to play? What is he? His early thirties. Matthew Stafford can still play. Health-wise, don't know. Last year, he he went through a lot. But if he's healthy, there's plenty of meat on that bone still for Stafford. But that that stunned me. Now, are there teams that could want Matthew Stafford? I would say yes, in a heartbeat. But Matthew Stafford wanted to be traded to L.A., lives in L.A., probably doesn't want to go. Sean McVay is back. It's not like they're blowing this thing up. I know the Rams are, are letting some veterans go. But they could bounce back this year. I just found that report to be very, very interesting, and I don't see the Rams doing that. That would mean that the Rams were really starting over. They might as well trade Aaron Donald, too, if they're trading Matthew Stafford. 
All right, folks, Locked On Lions for a Thursday edition. Thanks for making us your first listen and checking us out right here on the Locked On Podcast Network.